You ready to rebound, buddy? Yeah, right. You got anything to say? I know nothing. So we got some pretty big plants going on, and it's gonna take quite a bit of structural moving to achieve it. This is some of the large three by four first cutting squares that we bailed, some that we bought, some that we stole. Didn't steal any. This is where we have a lot of the large squares, and the whole idea this year was we knew hay was gonna be a little short, and we were hoping to rebale them. Well, the time has come. It gives us good January, February, March winter work. Keeps the paychecks coming in, keeps hours flowing. It's, it's a good system for the farm. But what we gotta do now is set up the rebaler. We made some improvements to it. We have a new, I believe it's a 16 foot long table that will let us flow into an inline baler instead of using a New Holland uh, side baler, whatever you're gonna call it. So we need now 67 feet of run to be able to use this machine. We don't really have that in this barn. So, Justin has an idea, and he's explained it to me several times now, and I'm just not following it. So I'm here to just be his moral support system and do whatever he tells me to do. He's gonna do something, we're gonna stick this boat outside that we haven't used in several years because we decided to make hay in the summers now. We're gonna try to move some of those squares over there, uh, piece this back a little bit, stick a lot of the hay over there, over here, these are some different type of bales that aren't gonna get rebaled that I need to move on a trailer, pull outside. And this is probably gonna take the whole day and we might not even get the rebaler in here, but it'll be well worth it. This, uh, this rebaling setup will make a lot of bales. We are hoping with the inventory we have bought from other farms and our own personal large square and round bale inventory that we're gonna be able to rebale and sell about 55,000 bales this year. Right, Carmen? And why don't you give nothing. us why don't you give us the breakdown on I know nothing. <laughs> but I don't even know what we're doing. So we have the numbers factored in. We we pretty much know with machine hours and man hours and all that stuff about what it costs to convert a large square into about about 28 or so small squares. We factor that in and it definitely makes more sense. We don't even have enough hay for our own personal small square market, so we're making sure that we don't lose customers going over the winter because historically that's when we've picked up a lot of our customers is we have hay in the winter, their old supplier didn't, they like the quality of our hay, they know we don't run out for them, boom, lifelong customer. Yeah, I wanted Carl to give a comment. What kind of comment, Carl? And I told him I know nothing! <laughs> I wanted him to tell the viewers why we're breaking down large squares. That's his comment, I, I know nothing. I got no idea! <laughs> Again? Because people are going to ask why are we even doing this. Gets us out of the field, Gets we got rain coming. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's another thing I didn't mention. So. These large squares, we bailed them because the small squares wouldn't have been able to do it. We didn't have the weather. Didn't have the time. Didn't have the time. But the hay was dry. The hay was dry. So one guy and one large square baler with one guy cleaning up can do about as, I think it can even do more than our four small square balers. Oh yeah. And way less people. So that was also one of the reasons. Right, Carl? I wasn't there. I missed that day. Carl wants his chair. I was not home for that <laughs> day. Can you tell me your plan quick? I'm going to take the boat go fishing. Where are you going to put the rebaler? Over here and along the, along the wall, outside so wall. So we're going to try to move all those bales over yes. there? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately we didn't prepare for that, but no. we're going to now. Alrighty. There's my trailer all geared up. I'm going to grab some of those second cutting large squares. Justin got the boat moved. I picked up three large squares. I feel like an absolute unit right now. Those are each about 1,300 pounds. So I had to drop one. Carl's screaming at me, did you lose it? What a good support system. I'm doing some kind of funky stuff. Do a last minute swoop de doo Ooh, barely scraped it. My tire over here, that is A-list operating. I don't care what anyone says. We just wiggle our way out of here. And that, my friends, is it. So Carl rallied the truck over here. I almost have it unloaded. This is the grab of the last two. I'm stacking next to some other large squares in this building, but we have a little bit of room. See, that's the thing about hay is you just can't stick it outside. Uh, not where we live. That's, that's leaning pretty bad. Oh, dang. So you're gonna grab those, and then I'm gonna come in here under that door and open you up a spot. I'm not under the door. Past the door. I'm gonna come in under the door. Because <laughs> oh, I have yeah. to. I can't come in over top. No, we're going to close the door and you're going to go through the door. <laughs> I'm going to open up a spot for Justin. Wait, not under the door, behind the door Wait, here. Not underwear. 
underwear. <laughs> yeah, you want? In case I wasn't clear enough, I'm going to come under the door, but not work under the door. Open up a pile here so Justin can come in from the side and spear him because you just you can't grab the hay like this without uh, the grapple. And we don't really want to be using the grapple, we want to use the spears. But you got to spear broadside like that. So I'm going to open up a hole behind me so we can eventually get the skid steer in. Got the boat out of here. These poles are split far enough apart that Justin can actually take the skid steer right through this side, this gap right here. So we just got to move these. I'm going to be pulling those down and setting them down in front of him. He can get them out of here until we get this all opened up. We have to get that back wall opened up because we're probably going to cut some holes in the wall stick the tractors outside so they're away from the dust and they're in cold air and everything while we're rebaling because last year we had some issues where well the radiators were getting plugged because we were in a dusty barn and uh we were having to shut down and blow them off every night it was taking a whole lot of time and additional maintenance that we didn't really want to do so if we could just poke a hole in the tin just hook up the pto and the draw bar through the wall that'd be great the one issue we have to try to figure out is we have to be able to quickly access the PTO or the machine consoles and shut them down in case, heaven forbid, someone's hand gets caught or even more likely the baler just jams or something like that. You need to be able to shut off the PTO fast. So that is an issue we will have to confront when the time comes. Justin is a very good operator. I've said that multiple times, but it doesn't, it doesn't even matter what machine he gets into with what attachment in what situation. He just does it better than probably anyone would do it. I have six lined up for him in between the poles, and I'm really hoping this is going to work because I would rather not have to drive all the way around the barn every time. I think it will. We intentionally made these bales about five and a half feet because we were going to wrap them and set them outside because we thought we'd run out of room, but then we just then we just started to square bale a lot more, which takes up less room because it's a lot denser package. So we made it out all right. This one's going to be the real test because he kind of has to bring the machine in through these poles. JCB, if you're listening, we'd love to demo the teleskid for this. Yeah, you can do it. So it's not the most perfect system because I would suspect in a perfect system there wouldn't be significant bottlenecks. I am waiting on Justin a little bit, but right now my task is a little bit easier and I believe his is harder until he starts getting some muscle memory coming between those poles and everything. But I am just pulling the hay that is, you know, very easily accessible. When I start trying to loop in here and grab up over there and turn around and twist, I envision having a little bit more difficulties. I know you guys are probably laughing like, what the heck? Actually, where we order our t-shirts from, eye candy, our t-shirts, our hats, our sweaters, everything, our stickers, eye candy, as soon as you walk in there, they have this sign that says boondoggle. And it's something along the lines of uh, something that seems like it should be important to do, but it's really just a waste of time and money and effort and doesn't really lead to any results. So I don't think this is a boondoggle. I think this is necessary to get to our end goal of rebating a lot of hay. Just something we got to do here. Okay, this is when it starts getting a little tricky. I'm coming in completely at an angle. I pretty much have to grab three. Stay away from the door back there. Try to pop open a hole. So when I pull out of here, I have to continuously flip it so it kind of stays square, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There it is. We're opening up this gap. Exactly what we wanted. We're in a groove, we are really starting to hammer down. Opening it up wide up. Justin said earlier today, if you're not moving stuff around, you're not farming. And he's right. This pile and the outside pile here is what we've done just shortly this afternoon. So we're getting stuff done. Moved out, just a little bit more to go. I don't really want to move these two trucks. I'm gonna try to drag this puppy back. This is so lazy, I should have just moved the truck. But as you can see, it is raining. So, all right. 
That's it. The spears did not make this any easier by any means. I actually think I had to wiggle through stuff a little bit harder. I backed myself up in, into this cove so I could cut with this four-wheel steer as sharp as possible. And there's just some pallets I couldn't pull out from under the bales behind me because the bales are on top of them. Man, we have the last two. The snow. I am bundled up. I got my Christmas Ray-Bans and my Carhartt hat on. I'm rocking all the brands. We're gonna try to get that bundler in the space we cleared. And uh, the actual rebaler machine, the uh, bale destroyer by Messix. We want to get that inside too. Look at the freaking ground. Oh. It's not good when you're walking and it sounds like a bowl of soup. The seat's gonna be nice and wet. Oh yes. That's what we want. No wet bottom for me! This is called deleted PTO startup seat. You don't have to have weight on it. We do not recommend that. Except for instances like this. How long we got? That's 40, so I think we only needed 30, so we got 10 more foot. 66. 66? What do you want, 69 you said? Yeah. Oh boy. But I think, uh, I think my measurements are wrong. Good. <laughs> Justin and I spent the morning moving large squares a little more, and Carl finally showed up. What time? Before noon. Before noon, Carl Before finally noon. shows up, and we're getting ready to actually Set this puppy up. The new 90 degree PTO gearbox and table moved in. We got that set up about where it's gonna be. We have enough room on the other side. Now we just gotta poke some holes in the barn wall. Justin's getting the baler in place. Uh, well, as much as he can. And we're gonna take the skid steer and jockey it around because we do eventually want the tractor to be outside, you know, the other side of the wall. We'll just get it in place and we'll take the skid steer and we'll spin it around and do something tricky. Get that measured and then we'll put the bundler behind it. We'll, pretty soon we'll be ready to turn it on. See, we're going to have to take this 90 degree gearbox, turn it so the tractor can hook up to that PTO and go outside of the wall. And the baler will come all the way up, hook onto this hitch onto there and the hay will feed up underneath right into the inline baler. The old safety chain trick. Well, on top of it. Down. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Right on the paint. Really? We got the baler in place. Justin needs me to move just a few more squares to open everything up. That banging is Justin and Carl dismantling the wall. Why? Ow! It just don't go! It broke! Has anyone ever seen a tape measure do that? Justin said he's had this since high school. Please get out of my way! You can't say the A word. Hey. 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 Hey ho. No. Smelling that broke my tape. I believe it. You yanked it through there. I didn't yank. Cut it. It was light. Of course, that the measured spot lines up with the only gutter on this side of the that barn. Is, that is not the gutter. I'm so not the gutter. The downspout. Right. The, the one in the middle. We still got the two in. We'll just plug it up. Plug? Yeah, it doesn't rain here. I had four bales left. Obviously, I couldn't do it in two trips. So we're just going to take this nice and easy. Justin and Carl like this one. Four. I did not rain for that. Neither is Break that. Break the window and it'll be another $2,000. 
trying to place the hookup of that machine through this. Keep coming. You're okay. Ah! Keep coming. Now I want you to raise it up. Are we just gonna drag it? Yeah, raise it up. On the jack? Yeah, that's a pretty strong jack. Back there. Let me look. You're close. Now Carl is going to flip this gearbox for us. Why me? <laughs> You're the it. mechanic. I'm the mechanic. Yeah, right. Okay. Carl and I had to run back to home base. We have to flip the plug on that gearbox. We flip it over. There's a plug here. And we need an Allen wrench to pull out that side. The freezer. The drain will show better. There we go. What are you thinking, buddy? Really? What are you thinking? I gotta get in there. Oh. If I don't keep moving, it'll spin out. All set. If it misses, that's all we need. Right? 90 degree flipped. The old man want to know if we were bailing yet. He had to come out to the dinner table. We ran out of blueberries in the office. <laughs> so he come out to the dinner table and started eating that one. No, he didn't. <laughs> didn't I think he? he did, yeah. <laughs> he said, I have not run out in there and there's more here, he said. So what do you think? He's eating them or not? What problem is MacGyver solving right now? I got no idea. Come on, you know. Here. Hold my hose. For Come me. on. Hang on. Don't go. So, with the addition of the new 16 foot table, our hydraulic hoses, the, I guess you call them standard factory hoses, are not long enough to get to the machine. So, Carl made a morning run to where'd you go? Hydraulic Connect? Hydraulic Connection. Hydraulic Connection. And he bought some fittings to make four 16 foot extensions on these hydraulic hoses. Precise measuring system. Okay. There's our fourth hose. We don't need to use the tape measure because you no. break them, remember? I did. We don't I, have any left. No more tapes, I break them. <laughs> Ouch! You gotta look in here and see where we're at. You lined up right? Good enough. For who it's for, we're on 1.1. Point one. Yeah. Why are we on one point one? Because that's what the chart tells me. Gotcha. Okay, you got to use the certain die. It were two wire, okay? Uh huh. Two wire. You come over here, see, it's 2R, which means two wire. Yep. Half inch fitting, 1.10. 1. 1. Well, 1.10, 1. but. It's okay. 1.1. 1. 1. Well, 1.10. 1. 1.10, okay. All right, because it's. Is there a metric difference? system? Yeah. So it's, and then you see it's crimped here pretty good. Yeah. Is that your job so, for the day? Yeah, I'm done. I'm ready Why to go. Key out? Carl, out my Uber. In? Hey, how come there's no room in your passenger seat? There's room. Hey. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> right, right through the barn wall. In the middle of the shop. Next video.